Let's take a look at how to solve mixed equations. We want to solve for w, and our equation is w minus 35 equals 30. Well, the rule is I can do anything I want to an equation as long as I do the same thing to both sides of the equation. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to add 2 to both sides, I could do that and my equation would be exactly the same, and then it would just become w It would become w minus 33 is equal to 32. But notice, in that case, doing something random, like adding 2 to both sides, doesn't really help me because now my equation is not any more solved for w. So instead, I want to be really strategic in picking what I do to both sides of the equation. So if I have w minus 35 is equal to 30, what I want to do is look where the w is. Now notice the w is on the left side. So anything that is on the same side as my variable, I want to try to move away or cancel out so that I have my variable alone. Because when I get w by itself, then I can say I solved for w. So if it has w minus 35, and notice it's not the 30 I want to move. The other side can be anything. I want the variable, in this case w, by itself. So here, it's that minus 35 that I want to get rid of. Well, to do that, I have to think to myself, what is the inverse or opposite of subtracting 35? Well, the opposite of subtracting 35 is adding 35. And of course, if I add 35 on the left, I have to do the exact same thing and add 35 on the right side. Okay, now the benefit of doing it this way is minus 35 and plus 35 cancel out, right? They would add up to zero. So now I have w by itself, and then on the right side I just have to add. 30 plus 35 gives me 65. So that means w is equal to 65. Now if you want to double check your work, what you can do is try substituting the answer you got in place of w and making sure it works out to give you a true statement. So if I wanted to check my work for this answer, I would say, okay, well, if, if w is supposed to equal 65, I should be able to say 65 minus 35 equals 30. Okay, well, if you subtract 65 minus 35, that does give you 30. So I wind up with a true statement, 30 equals 30, and that means that my solution is correct. Okay, and our solution was w equals 65, so that's what I'm going to put in the blank. d minus 12 equals 23, and we want to solve for d. Okay, well just like before, I'm going to see what I can do to get d all by itself. In this case, if I look, d is on the left side of my equal sign, and it has a minus 12 after it. So I want to use inverses or opposites to cancel out that minus 12 part because I always want the variable by itself. Well, the opposite or the inverse of subtracting 12 would be to add 12. And if I add 12 on the left side of my equal sign, to keep it balanced, I also have to add 12 on the right side of my equal sign. Okay, well, minus 12 and plus 12 cancel out, and that leaves me with just d, and then on the right side of my equal sign, I have to add 23 plus 12. Well, that's going to give me 35. So d is equal to 35. Now, if you want to check it, you can even do a mental math check instead of writing it all the way out like we did last time. You can just say, okay, 35 minus 12. Does that give me 23? And yes, 35 minus 12 is 23, so that means we must have had the right answer. Sixty-four minus s equals nineteen. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing we did in the last few problems, 
which is try to get the variable by itself. Now, one quick thing to keep in mind when you see a problem like this, when they say 64 minus s, you have to think about where that minus. That minus or that negative sign is grouped with our s. The 64 in front is positive. So it's positive 64 minus s equals 19. Now, the reason I'm making a big deal out of that is a lot of times students will group the negative with the wrong sign and then they'll think they should add 64. But no, that minus goes with the s. It's a positive 64. So that means to work towards getting s by itself, I would want to subtract 64. And if I subtract 64 on the left, of course, I have to do the exact same thing and subtract 64 on the right. Okay, well, 64 minus 64 cancels out. Now, be really careful when you recopy this. We don't want to just write s because remember that sign is grouped with it. So it's not just an s, it's a negative s. Okay, and then on the other side, we need to subtract 19 minus 64. Okay, now notice I'm subtracting a bigger number from a smaller number, right? I'm subtracting 64 from 19. So my answer is going to be negative. That gives me negative 45. Now, when you're working with integers, remember, you can think of this as 19 plus negative 64. And then we would say our answer is negative and then you could just subtract your absolute values and say 64 minus 19 gives us 45. So a few different ways to think about that when you're working on that integer arithmetic part. Okay, remember we wanted to get s by itself because we're solving for s. If there's a negative in front of it, s is not by itself yet. Negative s means the same thing as negative 1s. So to get s by itself, I would still need to divide by negative 1. And of course, whatever I do on the left, I'm going to do the same thing on the right. So I'm going to divide by negative 1 there as well. On the left, multiply and divide by the same number, cancel out, right? Those are my inverses or opposites. So now we have s by itself. And on the right side, I have to divide negative 45 divided by negative 1. And that gives me positive 45. Remember, a negative divided by a negative gives me a positive number. Okay, and of course, to check your work, 64 minus 45, does that give me 19? Yes, 64 minus 45 is 19. Forty nine minus G equals twenty nine, and we want to solve for G. Okay, well, forty nine minus G is equal to twenty nine. I want to get G by itself. This is a positive 49, and we're subtracting g. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 49 on both sides. OK, on the right side, I'm going to have 29 minus 49, which gives me negative 20. G is not by itself because of that minus sign. Remember, minus or negative G is the same as negative 1G. So from here, I'm going to divide by negative 1 on both sides of the equal sign. Over here, multiply and divide by a negative, cancel out, and leave me G. Negative 20 divided by negative 1 is positive 20, right? A negative divided by a negative gives me a positive number. So g must be equal to 20.
solve for d. d plus 23 is equal to 63. Okay, well I'm going to rewrite my equation. d plus 23 is equal to 63. To get d by itself, I want to do the opposite or inverse. Well, the opposite of adding 23 is subtracting 23. So I'm going to subtract 23 on both sides. Okay, I'm going to cancel this out. And 63 minus 23 gives me 40. Now you can check that even with just mental math. 40 plus 23, does it give me 63? Yes, it does. I plus 35 equals 52. Okay, so we want to figure out what number we would have to add to 35 to give us 52. Okay, well to solve this equation, if they're adding 35, my opposite or inverse, and I want to move that plus 35 away because my variable, or i, is what I want to get by itself, I would have to say minus 35 on both sides. Okay, here that cancels out and leaves me with i. And on the other side I need to subtract 52 minus 35, that's going to leave me with 17. And then of course as a double check, you can plug 17 in for i and say 17 plus 35, does it give me 52? Yes it does.